right, you're still tuned in to Market Pulse here on New Center in partnership with Narometrics. Yes, we'll get back to our guest for Pulse of the Day in just a bit, but we have Frank Fagbo here bringing us the key metrics. Okay, so it's key metrics, and um, if you look at what has been happening in Nigeria, you'll see that last week was a very, very tough week for the market because we saw what the CBN governor did. He increased our interest rate, and that was... And that, that, that was really, really surprising. The CBN, which is the Central Bank of Nigeria, raised our monetary policy rates to 27.25%. And this is in an effort to control inflation, which remains a pressing issue. And if you look at that, that's currently above 20%. With rates currently above 20%, while this move is aimed at stabilizing the economy, it has sent a lot of ripples through the stock market. Three factors stand out from this rate hike. The banking sector resilience. There's a lot of resilience as regards the banking sector. The banking stocks have shown relative strength to its higher rates. And if you look at that, it's higher risk boost through margins. We're seeing also looking at the fact that it's making them one of the few sectors to benefit from the rate hike. Investors shift to fixed income. And as borrowing costs rise, more investors are moving away from equities market and they're going into the fixed income securities, causing a decline in stock market volumes. Challenges for a lot of consumer goods. We're seeing that a lot of consumer goods, the sectors like consumer goods, have struggled due to higher input cost, creating a lot of headwinds for companies relying heavily on consumer spendings. If you're looking ahead, the stock market is expected to experience further volatility, especially if inflation remains high, forcing the central bank to implement additional rate hikes. Analysts are recommending a cautious um, approach to what is happening in the market, with some, suge with some suggesting that a hold on equities, particularly in interest-sensitive sensi interest sectors, until the economic um, landscape becomes much more clearer and before we can say, okay, hey, the CBN governor, this is the time where you can inc further increase the rates because it's quite tough for a lot of businesses. It's, it's not an easy, easy slope to go through regarding knowing fully well that the interest rate is 27.25. And if you want to walk into the banking halls and you want to get access to loans, obviously you're going to get it way above that. It's going to be pegged around 35%, 33%, 34%. So imagine how tough it is for businesses to survive in this terrain. But it's a fine line between inflation and a fine line of economic stability. So the CBN governor, is it, it's in his jurisdiction to find out where it's best for him to put the state of the Nigerian economy. Who knows whether it's going to hold interest rates or perhaps further re reduce the rates, just like what we're seeing happening in China, just like what we're seeing happening in the US. And we're definitely going to keep you abreast as to what is happening in the markets if the CBN governor persists or perhaps the next MPC meeting. Drona. Yes, I mean, a lot of people have described his move as preemptive, considering yeah. he went somewhat against the data at hand, right? Two consecutive months of disinflation, and you still decided to, you know, hike interest rates preemptively, anticipating the effects of. Uh, the fuel price hike yeah. on the market. But then again, what were your tomorrow, predictions? tomorrow we have, hopefully we'll see the results yeah. Naira for crude. And we know that it's been said that 40% of FX demand, right, That's right, is tied to crude. So that could eventually help out. Couldn't the preemptive move have been, have been with that being considered and, you know, instead of squeezing businesses further. So it's an interesting move. The debates will continue. I guess we'll have to wait till the next MPC meeting to see what happens next? That's the final MPC meeting for the year. For the year, yeah. right? Um, but we'll be back in just a bit, taking a look at African markets, and hopefully our guests will be joining us for Pulse of the Day, so stay tuned. All right, it appears Network and the Reigns are keeping our guests away. But, of course, we're going to push ahead with Pulse of the Day. The conversation is going to be quite the presence Nigeria will be receiving on the occasion of her 64th Independence Day celebration. Yes, tomorrow, the 1st of October, the supply of crude in Nara by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to Dangote Petroleum Refinery is set to begin. And this is as confirmed by the Technical Subcommittee on Domestic Sales of Crude Oil in Local Currency. This was confirmed yesterday. So on September 13th, if you recall, 2024, the committee announced that the Federal Executive Council, under the leadership of the President Bola uh, Tinubu, uh, approved the sale of crude to local refineries in Naira and the corresponding purchase of petroleum product in 
Naira. A pretty big deal, some will say. This introduction of Naira denominated crude oil sales to Dangote and other local refineries that are functioning or not, starting tomorrow, is expected to bring an end to the opaque 20 year old domestic crude allocation scheme. Um, so the questions are what effect will it have on the markets? What effect will it have on the currency? Hmm. What effect will it have on inflation? What do you think, Frank? It, it's, it, I feel that this is really good uh, because we're seeing so much pressure on the Naira. And if you look at what has been happening in the last, in decades, the pressure on the Naira, we're an oil importing um, mm -hmm. economy. We, we, are, we, are, we are oil, we're an oil economy. Everybody knows that. Yeah. It's audible to the deaf and physical to the blind. But here is the catch. That pressure that we're experiencing on, on, on FX, people trying to, NMPC trying to get foreign exchange to be able to bring back the yeah. oil, all those pressure is going to reduce, yeah. you get. And it's just like, um, with that pressure reducing, it's definitely going to have a positive impact in the general outlook of our foreign exchange market. Yeah, yeah. Because our foreign exchange market, the pressure so much, we, we import most of this inflation. We import inflation, we import um, the entire food. food, we import yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. And if one of our largest imports in this country, which is crude oil. If we can get that in Naira, then I think it's 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 a plus. It's it's a, it's a good way to celebrate. Yeah, it's indeed. a good way to celebrate independence. If you ask it's me, it's a good way. That's so a great initiative. Yeah. and some would understand why you know some may not have reacted or celebrate early, right? We need to see it actually play out. We need to see it actually happen. Oh yeah, we had several announcements, several initiatives. This deadline, that deadline. And I mean, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer There's a here, new deadline but we have to see it yeah. happen. I think that's very important. We've had Penka San also come out to say that, you know, this spiraling in, you know, uh, fuel prices yeah. is as a result of the FX component. So if we can somehow tackle that, if, you know, it's in Naira, that's less pressure, as you have mentioned, on, you know, the FX market. And, you know, perhaps less demand for FX, that could also help with the volatility in the markets and all of that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been interesting to see how this pans out. Also, considering the, the, the components FX has to play in inflation, yeah, right? True. We could see inflation also being affected positively by this move. We could see the currency market being affected positively by this move. And who knows, maybe by the time the next you know, decision by FBC comes around, the positive effects will begin no, running out. No, the CBN out. governor actually said it. He made mention of the fact that the Dangote refinery yeah. and the entire oil, this, the, 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 the back and forth between NMPC, Dangote, all of that is by the time Dangote starts producing. It's all it's definitely It's all announcement. It's all I understand. Announcement. But you know how the market moves. Come on. It moves on based on an and then announcement, you're in for a shock on sentiment, on news. Out. So it, I think it's, yeah. it's a welcome development. It's a great way to celebrate the new year. Um, in, in less than three months, we'll know what the outcome of that is going to be. Perhaps indeed, indeed. we'll start seeing the impact in the market. We will. And of course, we'll be tracking all that and more here on Market Pulse. African markets apparently are closing the month, for the record, are closing the month mixed. Okay, we're seeing Johannesburg down. We're also seeing Nairobi down as well for today. But of course, we'll continue to track the pulse of the markets. 4 p.m. West African time. Tomorrow the markets will be closed, but we'll give an interesting twist to the show. So stick around for that. 4 p.m. West African time every weekday. It's Market Pulse on New Central in partnership with Narometrics. I am Joanna Mustafa, and co-hosting with me has been... Frank Fagba.